we're going to turn it 45 degrees and then we're going to lock it. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to hold down control and do a half a nudge that direction. Just like that. We want that right in the center and all the way down to the very bottom. But if you go too far, it tries to flip around. So it's, yeah, okay. And then we're going to zoop, zoop it out one that way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a concrete pillar. We're going to turn it like this uh, at a 45 degree angle. Move it right over the seam of both of those walls and then bump it down one, just like that. Let's get out here till that attaches to the end of that. And then we zoop it all the way down to the ground. Remove this piece and then zoop that going up. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I am the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to get started with our first big factory built. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I have spent a lot of time uh, preparing for this. And uh, so there are a few things I want to show you first and talk about before we actually get started in earnest. But uh, the factory is going to be built in this spot right here. So basically uh, to the east of the waterfall, um, the base of the factory is going to be 17 foundations uh, wide and long. So 17 by 17. Um, and it's going to be a pyramid. Uh, so we're going to narrow it, of course, as we go up. And it, it, uh, it looks really cool because I've, I've already built it uh, on a test save. And it's going to be amazing. Very excited to, to build this on camera with you guys. Um, the factory is going to cover... Uh, all of the basic stuff, you know, so basically all the iron production and the uh, copper production. And I will later add uh, quartz and sulfur to it as well. But that's we're not going to put that in in, in the initial build here. Uh, let's see. So I have moved the hub and my operation over to uh, this location. And um, I've built a pad down here uh, on the water uh, with the awesome looking waterfall as the backdrop so this is this is going to be our home for quite some time probably not a, our permanent home base because it's my long-term plan uh to have well i can't really show you because the map isn't uncovered but it's my long-term plan to have a central hub and home base uh probably up in the crater lakes area which is pretty close to the center of the map uh, but that's going to be a while and so this is going to be our home base for quite some time and man it's a beautiful place to have a home base for sure Okay, so we're going to go into fly mode, and I'm just going to show you everything that's happened in preparation for this. I did a lot of things off camera because uh, I suspect that several of you are, you know, getting anxious to for me to actually build a factory in Satisfactory because we've been doing so much prep work. So I just did a bunch of stuff off camera, but I do want to show you what I did. Um, so let's go into Vanscape settings and just jump into fly mode for a second, and we'll kind of showcase some things. So um, over here... I have set up temporary storage, uh, but once the main factory is built, I'm going to have the storage uh, actually built over here, so it's right at our home base. Uh, but what I have set up at the moment is I've got a tractor uh, bringing, hauling all of our stuff from the original location uh, over to here, and then I have uh, just a real simple uh, sushi setup with smart splitters. And uh, so this one is separating out iron plates. This one's separating out rods, screws, wire, et cetera, all the way on down the line. The only one that's not uh, on the smart splitter system is this last one, which is making quick wire for us because we are going to need to make smart splitters uh, for our build. Um, so, yeah, this is concrete. That's, uh, uh, oh, I, yeah, I do want to show you this, too. I, I am now, I have now automated, reanimated SAM. And as you can see, I built this huge conveyor road here uh, well the the road itself was already in place in the last you know last few episodes uh, but I've added all the belts and I have all the inputs set up and ready to go for the factory uh, okay so let's see here I have placed a 
uh, a smelter shed, except for in this case, they're constructors over this limestone deposit. Um, so that's going to be uh, what's going to be making concrete for us. And of course, we have many, many more limestone deposits that we can increase that with. Uh, when I originally set this up, I hadn't, I didn't have all this stuff in place. So I just have some bins here collecting concrete for us at the moment. If we go back this way, uh, you can see, again, we got the conveyor belt set up. Uh, this top belt is a sushi belt, and it's spit, it's sending, it's, well, it's supposed to be sending, hmm, it's supposed to be sending pipe and beams along with the reanimated matter. So something's probably not hooked up right there. Let me take a quick look at this. Um, okay, let's grab all of those out of there. It's like... I probably hooked up one of these lifts incorrectly because this should be flowing back out. Ah, yeah. I do have that on the wrong side there. In fact, I have it on the wrong side for both of them. Alright, so let's see. We want to flow out of here into here. Out of here, into here. And then let's take these. Yeah, these were for moving the product up. Because I didn't, you know, I, I just set this up. It wasn't there, so it was just collecting the stuff. So now I actually want the product to move down. And then from there, come down into here. There we go. That gets the pipes on the line. Okay. So, yeah, this is just our temporary steel production uh, because we are going to need a lot of beams. Not so much pipes, but I'm making those too. But, man, we're going to need beams like there's no tomorrow because I've been using Mark III for pretty much almost everything. All of these lines and everything we're going to build in the factory is Mark III lines, as you can see. Okay. So, anyway, uh, up here I, I've got a little conveyor road that I built that goes along here up to this pure Caterium node. And this is supplying Caterium to the factory. This is really important because of the fact that uh, we are going to be using the Caterium wire recipe. So we're not really using a ton of copper, um, we're, we're mo but we are going to be using a lot of Caterium. So it's the same, you know, um, smelter shed set up, except for it looks like I forgot to connect those things back in. And right now it's all, you know, stalled out because nothing's nothing's running yet. But it's all set up and ready to go. Okay, down here I have um, a smelter shed set up over our iron, our normal iron. And it is, uh, the miner itself is overclocked to 270 per minute. And these machines are all set up to, in total, output 270. And then I set up another one over here too, over our copper deposit. Uh, same. No, actually, this one's not doing 270. I think I have this one. What do I have this one set to? 35 per minute. I've got it underclocked. Well, I mean, it's not doing 270 because we don't need that. So uh, what was that again? Uh, 35. Okay, so 35 times 6 is 210. Okay, uh, we need about 200 or so for the factory. I'm just sending a little bit extra because I'm going to be collecting ingots on the other end, just in case I need them for handcrafting. I'm not planning on collecting a ton of them, but I just want to have a few on hand. So that, that's why this one's over. Uh, our total iron consumption, I think, is going to be 510 iron ingots. And I'm running two of these setups at 270, so that means we're going to have 30 additional iron ingots just as spare ingots. And one, you know, once it's all completely set up, once the bin itself of ingots fills up, then everything else just goes into the sink. Over here, I've got everything nice and clean. Uh, the only thing I have is all of our storage bins, uh, just kind of feeding a little bit of a spaghetti mess into the truck station. And, not, you know, it's all just mixed up. And I'm just, you know, letting the tractor bring it over for us and letting the smart splitters sort it out on the other end. So it'll it's going to take a while for, you know, that tractor to get everything over there. But we should be fine because, you know, as long as it gets over there eventually... We're not in a super big hurry to, to get it all over there. But as you can see, I cleaned everything else up over here uh, that I could. All of this is going to be permanent installation. But uh, aside from these bins that will clear out, you know, once the stuff is moved. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. What else? 
over here. Well, I set this one up on camera for you guys in the last episode, so you saw me do that. And I want to show you my my little Sam uh, production setup over here. So this one was interesting because uh, things get really tight in this cave. So you have to kind of go down in through here and you have to crouch a little bit. And it, I tried to run the cable as best as I could without it clipping, uh, but it's just really tight through here. So it was, it was a challenge to do that. And it also is, it's not pretty, <laughs> but it is what it is, right? And uh, I have to crouch to get through here too. That's how tight it is. Uh, but as you can see, I've got a miner set up over here and it is overclocked to produce uh, 120 SAM per minute. Uh, because that is what this one requires just to, for the default recipe to then make 30 reanimated. We can't go any further than that with the automation until we unlock the manufacturer. So uh, I will need to uh, craft the f the next level thingies, flux capacitors or whatever the hell they're called. <laughs> Not flux capacitors, but oh, well, what the hell are those called? Sam fluctuators. There we go. Uh, these we're going to have to do by hand until we get the manufacturer. So... Uh, but at least we got the reanimated itself, you know, coming over to us. Oh, also, um, Doug the Doggo brought me some uh, some turbo engines. And he also brought me a purple slug, too, by the way. Uh, I'd bring him over to the new base, except for he's kind of stuck right now. Um, oh, there's some rubber. He's stuck under this belt, so I'm just going to leave him there until we clear all this out, and then I'll, I'll bring him over to the new base. Uh, another Meaning that I have to go walk slowly and let him follow me. If I get too far ahead of him, then he stops following me. But we'll bring him over there, and he'll keep getting some really good stuff for us. But, yeah, he got me some turbo motors. And uh, what I'll probably just end up doing with those is throwing them in the awesome sink to get a few more coupons. Because there are still several things I would like to get. All right. I think that's pretty much it, guys, for uh, what I wanted to get you updated on. I ran a nice straight road um, from this iron miner. Uh, this is what's feeding our steel way over in the corner there. And this is still temporary, but it's going to be here for a little while. So I wanted it to look neat. So I, I cleaned up the spaghetti mess and did a nice straight road here. Very good. All right, let's um let's let's head on back over to our... It's looking really cool over here, man. I love these, uh, these smelter sheds. I think they really look cool. Uh, but anyway, let's ha head on back over to our place here and get started with our factory build. I'm very excited. It goes without saying that this is this is going to take a while. <laughs> so uh, most likely this is going to be a multi-part uh, episode. Uh, we'll we'll see how things go, but yeah, I'm I'm expecting to take you know a good two to four hours or more for me to build this entire thing. So yeah, just uh, keep that in mind. And oh, I was going to show you one other thing or talk about one other thing. I haven't seen all of the comments yet from the last video. I've seen a few. But one thing that I discovered after I recorded that video, because remember, I'm new to all of this. Well, I guess we all are for that matter. But um, I was under the impression that we can only unload or sorry, upload one thing. But you can actually upload multiple stacks of things, <clears throat> possibly as many as you want to in terms of unique stacks. Uh, it's just limited by upload speed and by how big those stacks can be. So as you can see, I've loaded up the Dimensional Depot. Uh, with steel beams, concrete, reinforced plate, basically the stuff that we're going to be using quite a bit of. Uh, so that way, if we start to run out, you know, we, we still have a little bit of, of extra that we can use. So I have four of these set up just to, you know, upload stuff uh, as needed. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to show that to you as well. Uh, can you... Can we actually hook a belt up to this? I'd never even thought about that before. Oh, you can. Look at that. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, we'll have to... We'll have to think about how that's going to work uh, when the time comes. Uh, this pad over here, once we get the, the storage set up over in the main area there, I'll probably turn this into a bio a biofuel factory. That's kind of my, my tentative plan uh, for this area because I, I think I will keep this pad here and continue using it. But all of these storage bands and all, you know, all of this truck station set up and stuff back here will 
you know, we'll tear that down, you know, once we, we're fully moved over to the new location. Very good. All right. Let's go ahead and um, get started here with the build. Um, actually, I'm going to just do a little bit of inventory management first, and then I'll, uh, I'll bring you guys back and we'll get started. All right, as you can see here on our conveyor road, I have a tile that's marked red. Uh, this is basically the cornerstone, uh, going to be the cornerstone rather, of the building. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this. Um, actually though, I wanna use, well, for this one, it doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna go into vertical mode and we're gonna raise this up seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then we're going to Put that in place we're going to remove all of these and that is actually going to be the level of our first floor of our factory all right let's see if we can get up there i might have to probably gonna have to put a ladder to get up there the first time here which we can do we have the technology ladders are so useful in the early game when you don't have hover packs and jet packs and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, actually, no, we can leave that there for now. Okay, let's switch this over to a concrete foundation. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a, uh, a 17 by 17 grid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to... build the first one out because we're going to use um, blueprints to do the rest. Oh, actually, you know what? Something just occurred to me. Because it is 17 by 17, all we need to do, actually, is just do the two sides. Yeah, right. Okay. So, let's see. We have one, two, three, four. So that's 14. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. All right, let's check our work here. Seventeen. Okay, good. Now, let's do the same thing going this way. So that's eleven. Twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let's check our work. It's very important that I get this right because this is the foundation for everything else. And 17. Good. Okay. Now, the rest of this uh, should be fairly simple as long as I have enough concrete. We're just going to go into blueprints and we're going to go into foundations. And we're going to grab this 4x4x2 four by four by meter floor concrete blueprint. It'll be nice when I get the mark 2 because then I can make a 5x5. Five five. Lock that first one into place. And then the rest of these, if we go into blueprint mode by pressing R, we can snap into place easily. There we go. That big old concrete pad. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna grab a wall, and we're gonna go in two foundations by two, so right here. Tell you what, let's, uh, Just want to do that, you know, so we have, uh, so I have it right. Okay. Now we're going to zoop up five walls. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to create the second floor up there. Grab ourselves a ladder.
Now this one is going to be uh, 13. Yeah, this is going to be a 13 by 13. So that's 11. Twelve and thirteen. Let's confirm that there's two foundations on both sides. There is. Good. Okay, so um so we should be able to use our blueprints after just one more row is laid down individually. So let's get that marked first. All right, we need to go two more, it looks like. Confirm that there's two more foundations. Okay, that looks good. And then we should be able to uh, blueprint the rest of this. Uh, let's let's work out outward, just in case I screwed something up. Looks like we're pulling concrete from our our depot, and we're uh, we're already out. Okay, that's not surprising. It's going to be a lot of concrete to build this sucker. All right, I'm going to run back and go grab some more concrete. All right, let's load another stack of concrete into the cloud there, and then we'll run over here and grab a bunch more too. So that gives us five full stacks. There, we'll go with that much. Okay, very good. So this should be a 13 by 13. Let's confirm. Yes, it is, 13. Okay, well, it is on that side. Pretty sure it will be on this side, but... You know, I used to work construction a long time ago, and one of the first things they teach you when you're learning to do construction is double and triple check your measurements. And that is very good advice. And that's 13. Okay, good. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in another two tiles. So starting right in this corner. One, two, three three, four, five. Oh, I forgot to put a, a roof piece down. Can I, can I do it that from here? Uh, here. Let's start it there so we can start it there. Okay, so this one will now be, so we need to subtract four from 13, it'll be nine. So there's 10, nine, eight. Let's double check and make sure that it's two tiles. Yes, it is, okay. So we should have to go Eight that way. Two tiles, good. And eight this way. We'll fill in the middle now. That's going to over overlap, isn't it? All right, here, let's do this. Looks good. Okay, double check. We have nine. And we have nine. Excellent. Now, um, I, I'm going to need to reference my, my save, uh, my test save several times. Because I don't have this whole entire thing memorized by heart. And I need to go check something. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. Um, I just read the comments from... Um, yesterday's episode, or more comments, I should say, from yesterday's episode. 
and uh, you guys gave me an awesome tip. You basically said that I can take. Whoops. Try that again. Okay. Uh, you basically said that I can take the dimensional depots. Be appropriate. Organs and veins are grown, and bones are dug into our walls. The temple gift is being desecrated. Our notes are sour still. Harmony follows many star journeys. Patterns are starting to emerge in vocabulary, sentence structure, topics. How fascinating to once again solve a true mystery, to be unable to create any accurate predictions. Huh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what I was um, saying there is that you guys left me a cool tip where what you can do is you can put these uh, depots on top of your storage bins and hook a lift in it and then it just automatically keeps it full. So that is an amazing idea. Um, the stuff we're gonna run out of the most I think is going to be uh, steel beams. We're using a lot of concrete right now, but once we have the main structure done, then of course we won't need a ton of concrete. So I'm not too worried about that. But let's um let's take this depot here and let's find our yeah our steel and we'll put this on top of there. This is an amazing idea. I don't know why the hell I didn't think about it. I probably would have eventually, but, you know, I'm, this is all new, of course, so I really appreciate um, this suggestion. And now what that'll do is that'll basically keep the Dimensional Depot full of steel beams. Really cool. Um, I'm trying to think. We're going to be building a shit ton of constructors for this build. So... So cable and reinforced plates, but you only can use two reinforced plates per constructor. We're not making that many. So, well, I'll tell you what, let's do the same thing. Let's do the same thing with the concrete. So for this one's getting mixed, you know, uh, that concrete's getting mixed. So let's grab this depot here. And we'll come around over here, and can I uh, can I get one of those over there or up there? Yeah, there's just barely enough room, so we should be able to take a lift here. There we go. Okay, and that'll keep the the cloud uploaded with concrete. Awesome, awesome tip. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Okay, we are going to go up one more, but for this last one, we're all only going to go in one foundation instead of two. Uh, no, that's not what I want. I want a normal wall. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And let's put the floor on this one. Okay, so this other one was a 9x9, nine nine, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, because I, I grabbed one down below, too. That means this is a 7x7. Seven seven. Okay. So there's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Bring that one out. 6. We'll just... Zoopity doop these. Okay, let's make sure we have Yeah, just one foundation in on this last one. I think we are good. Okay. Now, let's go all the way back down.
So uh, we're going to build, we are building the main structure first. Maybe not all of the deco and, and, and as, uh, what am I saying? Cosmetics. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. Uh, but the, the main structure we, we need to build first because I need that in place to make sure then that the build is not going to be blocked by pillars and things like that. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a big concrete pillar and we're going to stick it right on the end and lock it in place. I'll just make sure that it's right on the end. Um, actually, no, I don't lock it yet. Uh, we're going to turn it 45 degrees and then we're going to lock it. Okay. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to hold down control and do a half a nudge that direction. Just like that. Okay, good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a wall. Uh, let's see, walls. We want that right in the center and all the way down to the very bottom. But if you go too far, it tries to flip around. So it's, yeah, okay. And then we're going to zoop, zoop it out one that way. Okay, now let's get a temporary scaffolding out this way. And I also want, uh, I think I need to get up higher for a second for this to work correctly. There we go. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a concrete pillar. We're going to turn it like this uh, at a 45 degree angle, move it right over the seam of both of those walls and then bump it down one, just like that. Okay. And put that in place. Now let's get out here until that attaches to the end of that. And then we zoop it all the way down to the ground. Remove this piece and then zoop that going up. And then once that's in place, we can remove all of this stuff. And that puts this pillar as close to the center as I could figure out how to do it. It's still not perfectly close. And the way we can tell that is see how it's right up against this line, but there's a, you know, a little bit of a space there. Uh, but I tried this with road barriers. I've tried it, you know, with walls and the pillars, you know, and the way that I just showed you is the closest. If I do this with road barriers, uh, it's off even just a little bit more. And the way you would do that with the road barrier is, you know, you would put it in, nudge it over uh, two full nudges and a half a nudge, and then, you know, do something very similar, but that that's even further off center. So this is as close as I can get it. So it's not perfect, but uh, I don't know how to get it any better than that. But it'll, it's pretty minuscule, so it's not really going to be noticeable. Plus, we're going to put some trim along the edges anyways. So it won't be a big deal. All right. Let's remove that. And then we'll go up and bring this pole all the way to the top. And that just goes in like that. Okay. So, yeah, again, it's not perfectly centered, but as close as I could get it. All right. So you guys get the basic idea. Um, it's okay that there's a gap here, too, because here again, we're going to trim this in. But I need to do this on the three other sides. So let's get her done. All right, guys, I got the beams done on all four corners. And uh, now that these are in place, uh, we can actually use them <coughs> to uh, get up to the floors. We don't even need the ladders anymore. So pretty nice. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build trim around the, uh, the building here. We don't need this any longer. And we'll start on this side. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take this foundation out for a moment and then we put it back 
but we want to nudge it three positions to the right. All right, and then let's make ourselves some scaffolding here. Okay, then we grab this block and we put that, um, let's try it right there first and then put this one on the end. And what we're looking for is we don't want this to protrude um, out the side. It's okay if it protrudes out that side because it'll be covered by the trim coming back the other way, but we don't want it to protrude out that side. Okay, that looks good. And then we just pick these scaffoldings up. This we can put back the way it's supposed to be now. And then we run, uh, whoops, get that in zoop mode. And then we zoop this all the way down. Let's get rid of that. Oh, we need to also um, get rid of the ladder here too. Oops. And we'll hop under here and then just go up the side here. Well, that's kind of weird how the parachute just kind of helped me float up the side. Okay, and then let's see what that looks like. Uh, looks good. Okay. Now we do the same thing here. We we'll grab this. And we nudge it three back. And out on our scaffolding. Stick that there. And that there. And as long as the corner is not sticking out, we are golden. that piece back up. Oh, did I double that? I don't know. Okay, put this one back in its normal spot. And then zoopity doop on down. Alright, is that one sticking out? Nope, looks good. Alright, so you get the idea. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna uh, just go around and do that for the rest of the the bottom part here. Now we really uh, essentially do the same thing on the top. The only difference up here is that we bring the foundation, uh, we just bring it back one and a half this time instead of three, right? So one full one and then hold control to do a half of a nudge. Uh, but other than that, it's the same deal, right? So we'll just get this one started. This one in there, and that's already gone into there. Good. And then we'll put this back. And zoopity doop on down. And that one looks good too. No protrusions. Okay, so, yeah, it's the same exact thing, except for that you only go one and a half blocks back. And then the one up above uh, on the third floor here, that one, uh, we don't have to do any nudging at all. We just put it in place as is. And it should work according to my testing. So we just want to... Uh, Maybe start it there. And corner is not protruding. So we're good. Okay, so yeah, uh, you guys should get the idea. When we, uh, when we get up to the top, we're going to do something a little bit different. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to do uh, the trim on the top. So I'll finish these other ones up first. 
All right, guys, we are at the top of the pyramid here and ready to do the last part, at least uh, the last part for now, anyway. I do uh, have more plans for this building when we get more stuff, uh, you know, cosmetic wise and all that. Uh, okay, so let's pop you right there and then we'll turn you and go that way. And I'm going to put that there for the moment. Take this off. And then we'll run these all the way around. Now we're going to remove the corners. Uh, okay, is it gonna let me stand on here? Yeah, for some reason, it seemed like the higher up I got, it wouldn't let me actually stand on it. I don't know why. Um, but actually, um, okay. Let's remove these momentarily because I think what we need to do is get out here. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to grab a, a half of a one meter half foundation and we're going to pop that there, lock it and nudge it forward to there. Actually, I don't think I needed to nudge that, but that's okay. Uh, now we're going to grab the big frame pillar, and we want we want this to, to be at an angle, so that's why we had to put that little plate down there first. And then I'm going to push it in to there. And then we're going to raise it up. Three, two, two. We'll raise it up about six. And then once that's in place, we can remove this again. Okay. Right, I'm going to do that on all four corners. And the plan is that I'm, I'm going to do some cool stuff with some lighting later on, like the, you know, the big uh, floodlights. But I don't have those unlocked yet in the shop. So, um, and I, I may do some cool things with some lighted signs as well. But we also don't have signs yet because I, I, I need to get quartz going, which will probably be the next thing we'll do after we're done with this. Um, either, either that or we'll build our steel production. We'll see which... Which one I want to do first. Okay. Very cool. Um, let's go ahead and pop into fly mode real quick and just take a look at our handiwork here. And once again, you know, this is not the final uh, configuration of this building cosmetic wise. It's uh, about as far as I'm going to take it for now, because now, now we're going to start working on building the factory. But that looks pretty good, if you don't mind my saying so. That looks pretty damn good. All of the the trim pieces fit together nicely and, you know, clipped inside the beams without any protrusions. Um, the, the way this one came together, I kind of had this little funky thing going on on both sides, but I really couldn't do anything about it. It's just the dimensions of that particular floor. Uh, but yeah, I like it. I think it looks really good. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to bring the space elevator up here. And this is going to be its... It's going to be its home for a while anyway, maybe not permanently. We'll probably move the space elevator to our central hub when we, when we eventually build it. But look at that building, man. That looks awesome. It'll look even better when the with the space uh, space elevator on it. I might, we might do some s extra supports down below too, just because it just it, it seems to me like it probably needs that. We shall see. Let's grab the space elevator. 
and head on back. There's our tractor working away. So what I'm what I'm thinking here is doing something maybe along these lines. And then uh, putting verticals up, you know, evenly spaced all along the bottom. Just to give it a little extra support and even a little more character. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I like that from a structural standpoint. It just seems like, you know, with all of the weight of this thing, that it needs more than just, you know, those angled pieces. Okay, let's... um. Line this up right in the center, right about there. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and then run directly west and then go up to here. Except for... All right, that one's indented. And this one's indented over here. So what we need to do to do this right is we need to make sure... Oh, I can't nudge that, huh? Uh, okay, what if I temporarily remove that and put this on the foundation? Except for, oh, okay, and then nudge it that way. There we go. Now it's, I think it needs to go this way, one, two. There. Now it's based upon the foundation. And as long as we do that on all four corners, it'll be symmetrical. So if we remove that guy... And put you. Okay, wait a minute. This is a this is a 17 wide thing. That means that means the eighth. No, the ninth foundation would be the exact center. Because there would be eight on both sides, which is 16, and then the ninth would be 17. Okay, so if we do this. That is the correct one, but we do need to move it over. Okay, so we're going to lock that. We're going to pull it back this way and then go right into the center. If I just look at this... No, this one needs to be moved over. Okay. So move it over, we shall. So you go there. And you need to be there... And then you need to move over to there. And then you're right in the corner of the foundation. And then we just reattach this one here. Here, let's, let's get up in the sky. Okay, yeah, I like that. I think that looks good. Um, I guess the only other question now is should we have another support here and here? I don't know. I, I'm going to leave it this way for now, and I might decide later on to to add more in between. I don't want to overdo it either, you know? That's the thing, so. See, for some reason, it stops me right here, and if I try and jump up there, then it slides down. It's really weird because it's the same angle. <laughs> I don't get it. But if we go into parachute mode, we can kind of parachute ourselves up. Well, at least that far anyway. Uh, you know, I'll set hypertubes and that sort of thing up too eventually here. Uh, but I guess that means we don't have a quick and easy way to get up to the very top floor. 
Um, so we'll probably just use a ladder for that for now. And let's just put it like right there. Um, this might end up being in the way when we do our build up here. Well, you know what? If it is, we'll move it at, at that time. We'll just move it at that time. Very good. The space elevator is going to face the waterfall. And I think this is the center here. Let's grab it. And we want the console facing this way. All right. And then let's just make sure that it is centered. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's bring it back to where the edge of this is. Uh, well, almost in the middle of that tile. Let's watch this again. We've all seen it a million times, and it never gets old. something about that. It's just so freaking awesome, man. That just rocks. I love it. It's funny, too, because when you move the space elevator, then the distribution platform up in orbit there moves with it, which is which is cool. Because I kind of wondered what, uh, you know, what how that was going to work. But what the hell? Oh, I got another space elevator that thinks I want to sit down. Um, Wait, can you sit down two space elevators? I don't think you can. Anyway, um, yeah, so the so the distribution platform moves with the space elevator. It's really funny. Cause, you know, it would it was more over that way, of course. So yeah, we'll keep this guy here for now. Um more than likely I will move it um you know to the central hub when the time comes. But uh when we get the floodlights what we'll do is we'll yeah i can't bring that down without it clipping and looking looking like shit there so i tried that and it was like nah i don't like that you know what we could maybe do what would this look like hmm i mean it, it, it it's doing this but that's not Era bad. I mean, I could probably live with that, actually. If we held this one back like a, a half of a nudge, then it wouldn't clip here, but it would then also push this out See, this is almost flush here at this angle. It's not quite, but it's close. And if we push it out even further, because my what I'm planning on doing in here is I think we're going to put one of the, uh, you know, a, a sign, some kind of a sign to cover this and light it up. It'll look badass, you know, when the time comes. But I, I don't, I actually, I don't mind that. It, even in spite of the, you know, the little bit of clip in there, I don't think that looks terrible. I, I think this looks better than having kind of this open gap right here. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but, yeah, I think this looks better. It looks like it should be that way, you know, to support this this steel tower. Me likey. So that, ladies and gentlemen, will conclude our... 
structure build for our factory. The next part of this endeavor is to set up our machines and get the factory actually up and running. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here because, you know, we're quite a ways into this. And uh, like I mentioned to you all, this is going to be a multi-part episode to, to finish this. This is a big project. Um, and so what I'm going to do off camera is I'm just going to put all of these supports uh, on all four corners and one in the center. Um, I'm not going to put one of these in the center here, even though I should technically for reasons <laughs> that you'll know that you'll that, that will become clear to you later and uh, i don't suppose i can oh we're gonna have some challenges here yeah i'll have to figure that out even if i have to run the the coal belt around it we'll figure it out though we'll get it to work and uh yeah so in the next episode the plan will be to get started with the actual building of the machines we'll start on this floor this is our iron floor it's the largest floor because it's going to be doing the most stuff and um, I think I'll leave it at that. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, shout out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.